Hi guys, so today we are going to learn on subtopic 10.3 mechanism of heartbeat. I hope you are ready with your pen and paper to take notes. Okay, so you have learned about the structure and function of the human heart in your previous lesson on subtopic 10.2. Now, we are going to look into the mechanism of heartbeat, how heartbeat is produced. Alright, now, the main structures that are involved in the mechanism of heartbeat, we have a few things, alright. So, we have the cardiac muscles, the sinoatrial node, which is the SA node, which is also known as the pacemaker. And then we have the atrioventricular node, okay, I will show you in the picture here. Uh, wait, uh, okay. So, we have the uh, sinoatrial node, okay, and then we have the atrioventricular node, both are at the right atrium, okay, and then we have the bundle of Hist, okay, this is the bundle of Hist, and then we have the Purkinje fibers, alright, so the cardiac muscles contract repeatedly without fail to produce heartbeat to pump blood. Right, the bundle of his consists of Purkinje fibers that function specifically to flow the electrical impulses from the AV node. Look at the AV node, all right, and into the cardiac muscles in all parts of the ventricle wall, okay, for ventricular contraction. So AV node is involved in the ventricular contraction. Now, although the cardiac pacemaker determines the pace for ventricular contraction rhythmically. The pacemaker itself is regulated by two sets of nerves and hormone, which are the parasympathetic nerve, okay, which uh, functions to slow down the pacemaker. The sympathetic nerve is to speed up the pacemaker. And also, they are regulated by the adrenaline hormone, which helps to increase the heart rate in emergency situation. So, all this involved in making the heart beat. Okay, so we know that the contraction of heart is initiated and coordinated by the pacemaker. Alright, now the pacemaker is located in the wall of the right atrium, as you can see in the picture. It generates electrical impulses which spreads rapidly over the walls of both atria, causing the atria to contract rhythmically. Okay, the heart's primary pacemaker is the sinoatrial node, okay, the SA node because it keeps the heart regular. And from the SA node, the impulses are relayed into the atrioventricular node, which is located at the bottom of the right atrium and is connected to the bundle of his at the bottom. All right, the AV node has similar cardiac tissue uh, to the SA node and the AV node sends impulses to the ventricles so that the ventricles can actually contract. So these are the fun facts which you can see from your textbook, which have, we have the, the metronic micra, which is the pacemaker, which is the smallest artificial pacemaker in the world. The size is about the size of a vitamin pin and it's placed um, in the heart without a surgery. So these are for those who cannot regulate their heartbeat, who cannot produce their own heartbeat. So this artificial pacemaker helps to pump your blood. Alright, so this artificial pacemaker sends small electrical charges to stimulate the heartbeat. Okay, now let's look at the mechanism of heartbeat. Alright, first, what happens? The SA node generates electrical impulses that will spread through the muscle cells of both atria walls, thus contract both of them to push the oxygenated blood from the left atrium to the left ventricle. Okay, and the deoxygenated blood from the right atrium to the right ventricle. It happens together. Oxygenated and deoxygenated left hand side and the right hand side. Okay, now the electrical impulses cannot flow directly from the SA node to the ventricles because it is blocked by an insulated ring tissues in the wall, okay, uh, between the atrium and also the ventricle. So the AV node, which also receives impulses from the SA node, will delay the impulses for about 0.1 seconds okay to ensure that a complete flow of blood from the atria to the ventricles before conducting it into the ventricles through the bundle of his and also the two branches in the septum between the ventricles 
All right, now the impulses that reach the apex of the heart will spread to all parts of the wall of each ventricle through a network of Purkinje fibers to produce the contraction wave in both ventricles. This is called the ventricular systole. All right, contraction of the ventricle simultaneously starting from the apex of the heart and also upwards. All right, so now this causes the oxygenated blood from the left ventricle to be pushed into the aorta and the deoxygenated blood from the right ventricle is pushed into the pulmonary artery. All right, so after the ventricular system, the whole heart relaxes to allow the blood from the vein to enter and fill the heart. And this is called the diastole. Diastole is the relaxation of the uh, heart. Diastole, right? Systole is the contraction of the cardiac muscles. Okay, and uh, yeah. All right. Now, cardiac diastole. Just now we talk about diastole and systole. So now, cardiac diastole is when cardiac muscles relaxes. The atrium, the ventricle relax. It's called diastole. So the beginning, uh, in the beginning, there are no impulses, okay, received from the pacemaker. So the atria and the ventricle can actually relax. But the diastole phase ends when the contraction of the atrium happens to push the blood into the ventricles. Alright, and the systole phase will take over because the systole is when the muscles contract. So how do you remember? Diastole is for filling and systole is pumping. So diastole happens when the muscles are relaxed. Systole happens when the muscles are contract. Okay, now, um, during the heart pumping, the loop-loop sound can be heard, correct? So, how does it form? Alright, it is the opening and the closing of the heart valves. So, what valves are involved? Okay, the first loop sound is produced when the tricuspid valve and the bicuspid valve close. The 32 just now. The tricuspid, bicuspid, they close together, correct? So, that the blood can flow from the right, from the atrium to the ventricle. All right, and then the second drop sound is produced when the semilunar valve close. So the first one, loop, is the bicuspid and tricuspid. Second dup sound is because of the semilunar valve. Loop, 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 loop. Okay? All right. Okay, now, so how is the blood propelled through the human blood system? Okay, the pumping of heart helps in distribution, correct, of blood through the arteries, the arterioles, the blood capillaries, all right? But um, this force produced by pumping of the heart okay, is insufficient for the blood flow to continue through the veins and then return back to the heart. So it's only able to pump out, okay, until it reaches the body cells. But how does it flow back, all right? So the blood is now forced to flow against the force of gravity because it's not going to go upwards like you see uh, the blood from your legs have to move up into your heart so it's against gravity so what we have here is we have valves in the veins you have learned in your previous lessons a lesson that veins have valves correct so this is why we need valves to ensure that the blood flow in one direction okay to the heart so blood is sent back to the heart with the help of the contraction of the skeletal muscle around the veins all right so you can look at the picture look at the skeletal muscle which will contract and relax to push the vein upwards now when the uh, skeletal muscle contract the vein will constrict so the valves will open and the blood will push along through the veins and quickly close to prevent a backflow so this actually helps to bring back blood to the heart okay All right. All right. So we are done. We are done for subtopic 10.3. So now you can do the formative practice 10.3 on page 182 to test your understanding. All right. You, if you don't understand, you have to go through again, make your notes, draw the heart and see how is the flow. Okay. Now the questions are number one, name the main heart pacemaker. Alright, what does the term myogenic mean? Explain why a person who stands too long may faint. Alright, and also, in what circumstances would fingers turn pale? So, these are hot questions. You can try to answer them. If you are done, you can check your answers from the description box below. Alright. And, and with
with that, we are done. With that, I will end my video here. And thank you for watching. And please do not forget to like and subscribe to my channel. Bye-bye.